everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay him a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. <laughs> ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. First of all, I'm Mark Wirt, Dr. Wirt. I live in Franklin County, if anybody knows where the Nissan plant or Green Hall is, I live down yonder there. Um, I'm a veteran. I've been practicing ER for over 14 years. I went to a little liberal arts school called uh, Denison University, where I started out a theater major and ended up with a Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry. And I went to, oh, this is real important. I went to medical school up in Yankee Land. Half my, uh, half my family's from parts of West Virginia that make uh, Tullahoma look like New York City. And um, up there in Columbus, they're real, real proud of this, this word. It's not Ohio State University, it's THE Ohio State University. Now, I was taught, in a, you know, like I said, my, most of my family's from rather humble origins, that you don't live ab above your raisin and you don't live in, you know, play around like you're living in high cotton. And, um, but apparently they do at Ohio State because since I graduated, they added this too and public health. So I guess it's supposed to make us all feel more important. Why, why, do, people, why, do, why do people end up coming to the ER? Anybody have any, any guesses why people come to the ER? Well, there's, there's a few things that tend to predispose our need to come to the ER. Some of it has to do with the uh, quadruple bypass burger. And, and you know, there's certain risk factors in emergency medicine that we just, we just assumed from the beginning. For instance, if you're a farmer and you show up, you're sick. Yeah, who said that? Because you'd rather have your toenails ripped out than come to the doctor. Oh, doc, that's okay. Just give me that shot. For, sorry, my chest pain feels better. I got to go harvest the back 40. I'll come back tomorrow. Okay. So there are little risk factors, and, 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 and so what I thought we'd do is we'd try and go through some different things about what goes on the ER, and uh, then open up for questions and maybe try and make it a little entertaining, too. If we're going to cooperate, here we go. Okay, again, another opportunity to improve. Medicare says I have to complain at you, whine at you, and beat up on you for anywhere from five to ten minutes every time I see you about your use of tobacco. When we ask you about do you smoke, we don't only mean smoke, we mean dip, chew, snort, any other type of tobacco. Any smoking within a 50 mile radius of a child is wrong. Okay, well, you know, most people who smoke didn't, or dip or chew, didn't get that way overnight, and it's not gonna take, it's, it's not gonna be overnight that they stop. And so, yes, we have to beat up on you, and we reinforce that, and we'll, we'll help get you, if we can, to where you need to be on stopping, but that's among, Let's see where we go back. This actually is now risk factor number one, being considerably overweight in what, what we categorize as the body mass index of, of 30 or more in the obese category uh, is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day uh, on its impact of your health. This is, this is right up there too. But anybody know what the Waffle House is? No, nobody's ever ate at a Waffle House, have they? I love the Waffle House. Um, 
if you look at the background here, pretty much the Waffle House is the only thing standing. The Waffle House sign is the only thing standing. This is after Hurricane Katrina, actually. And um, I bring this up because I don't know if you know it, but FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, has what they call the Waffle House Index. If Waffle House is open, it's not as bad as a disaster as it could have been. <laughs> it's true. Because they'll bring, they'll never, they never close. You know, I have this, I have this, this, you know, you know who's open on Christmas night? Okay, the ER, the jail, and the Waffle House. <laughs> and the odds are, if you're at the Waffle House on Christmas night, and you're not employed by the Waffle House on Christmas night, you're either on your way to or from the ER or the jail. Because <laughs> even Walmart closes on Christmas night. So, um, they, they, we kinda, I kind of, when, when I say, when people leave, I say, all right, you have any problems, let me know. We're like Waffle House, we're always open. And there's a reason for that, because come hell, high water, or, or whatever, if we can back up a generator, even if we can't, uh, we'll be open. And that, that's something to keep in mind when you're sitting there thinking, boy, I don't feel so good. I've had a fever, or cough, or, boy, it's twinging my chest, and... I, I know Dr. Bills takes real good care of me, and he's watching my blood pressure, and, and, and Dr. Sanders has been really good at managing uh, um, my, my, my heart trouble, my blood pressure, and, and, and making sure that I get all my medicines straight, and Dr. Nichols does a good job, too, and Dr. Tucker, and all of those folks, and Dr. George and Dr. Gupta have stents where they need to be, and my pacemaker ticking, and all that, but some just doesn't feel right, but that's okay, you know what, I don't want to go to the ER, um, so I'm just going to wait it out a little bit, I got, just got to think this through, because we all know this is what it's going to be like, okay, we're going to have people lined up out there, and, and, you know, there'll be riots, and everybody will be upset, and, but boy, do I really have an emergency, do I need to go, boy, I, I don't know, because, you, you know, we got the ER, and then, then you got the, all the prescriptions and all the commotion, and we all know that it's going to take, you know, 17 hours. The, the standard that they want us to shoot for is that among all comers, whether you have a sore throat, a heart attack, or you're waiting for surgery to get your gallbladder out, you're supposed to be in and out in two hours. Okay, well, that's real good if we have 10,000 rooms, 9,000 uh, nurses, and 22,000 physicians standing around. That doesn't always work that way. But interestingly enough, we, we have been, and I know if you've been sick in the ER, it doesn't seem like it, but our, our averages have been running about two and a half hours among all comers, which really isn't so bad, um, partly because we just don't know what's coming in the door. One of the, some of the things that impact the length of stay, for instance, are how full the hospital is. I mean, we can, we can get to the point where we know what we need to do with you, and we start picking on you. And usually, I mean, those of us have been doing this a while, I, I'm old. I graduated medical school over 21 years ago. When you've been doing something 21 years, you're old. And uh, I, I know pretty much within, for 80% for 80, 80 of the people, within 15 to 30 minutes, whether you need to stay in the hospital, Miss Judy will tell you that. Um, it's the other 20% that give you the, all the gray hair that I have. And then we have our, our requisite number of folks who, who come in. I tell people, for instance, you know, you have a sick baby. I, I, I have an, a new mom that comes in, and, and their baby has a 99.9 .9 fever. And they're wrapped up in 18 layers of cloth, uh, clothing and blankets and snuggled into that carrier and it's 122 degrees outside, okay? All right, the baby's doing pretty good, but it's not mom's fault. You know, she doesn't necessarily know. It, 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 Dr. Mom takes some experience. I, I mean, I have two first children. Yes, I have one wife, three kids, okay? Only been married once. I don't know how she stands me, but nonetheless. But my oldest child is 17. She's a senior in high school. My next child is 11, and then fixing to be nine in, in a week. So I consider it, I raised an only child, and then had a second first child. And when you have that much spacing, it really kind of is. And, and it's not till you, get to, till you ruin your second, third, or fourth kid that you really have the doctor mom thing down. 
So I tell people that I have no idea what's wrong with your baby. I can't tell you over the phone without looking at the, at the baby. Now, I can give you a good guess, but sometimes there's a lot to be gleaned from just taking a look at somebody, okay, or that baby. So I tell people, if it bothers you, it bothers me when it comes to kids. I said, I'll pat you on the back 999,999 times. You get that one time, and, and you say, give some time, and all it'll be okay. For that one time when I really, really needed to see the baby. By the way, the same thing applies to chest pain. And we're kind of grumpy like that. We say chest pain, and we mean chest discomfort, chest pain. If it, if it remotely makes a twinge in your chest, that's chest pain to us. But I don't know until I hook you up to an EKG machine. I can give you a good guess, because I can tell you, by the way, you know what normal is? Normal's the statistical average of all the weird people in the world. The question is whether you stand two standard deviations beyond the mean on either side. So since traditionally in Western medicine, normal is a uh, 25 to 27 year old, five foot eight to five foot 10, Northern European white male of 150 to 170 pounds. I don't see many of them around anymore. Um, that's not very normal to me, okay? So I can give you a good, based on your history and your story, I can give you a pretty good guess over the phone, but unless I'm your primary care doctor or your cardiologist or something like that that has a relationship with you for a long period of time, I can't tell you because I don't know you. I don't know the medicines you're on. I don't so if you think you might be having a stroke or you got an odd pain that just won't go away or you have chest pain or, or you're, you're sweating or short of breath, I need to see you. I may do an EKG and say, here, take some... Uh, Take some myelin and go home, you'll be okay, okay? But you might get an EKG, a bunch of blood work put in the hospital too. Now the national average, for instance, on admitting people to the hospital for chest pain yields about 28% positive results. That means 72 of those pe people out of every 100, we send home within 24 hours saying, it's not your heart, it's okay. My personal average is right around 50%. I don't know, is it just because I'm, uh, you're, you get bad luck if you get me? Or am I just better at sorting them out? I don't know. It's probably just because I'm more conservative and I, I, I don't mess around with chest pain and stroke and things like that. So, but when we get all those people, and you, you think back to that lady in the beginning who was trying to decide whether she's going to come in or not, one of the reasons people don't want to come to the ER or we get so bogged down is not because of, of mom worried about her kid, someone coming in with chest pain or got run over by a car in the parking lot at Walmart or something like that, which happens more often than you'd think. Um, it's because... Uh, well, you, you know, I, I need my, my da, 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 uh, well, it's a da, 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 it begins with a D, it's a dilly did, dilly did, yeah, that, that, that dilly did, it, 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 it's better than the morphine, it's better than the morphine, my doctor gives me 170 of them every week, I need some more, or, and, and so I tell mom, you know, I said, you know, bring your, bring your kid in whenever you want, and I better never hear as one of the medical directors, I better never hear anybody complain to you about bringing your child in or, or bringing your spouse in because they had chest pain or, and Lord knows the, the wives are going to bring us in for chest pain because we certainly aren't going to come in voluntarily as guys. And, um, it, you know, if it turns out to not be that, that's okay. But if you come in because you want pain pills for you, because you stubbed your toe six months ago, I'm going to cut your foot off and beat you with it. Okay, this clogs up. It is amazing how much it clogs up. But sometimes pain, I mean, when you think about it, what is pain? Well, pain is your body saying, hey, stupid, there's something wrong. And so you really need to pay attention to it. The, the, the problem is sorting out what's, what you need to do. And just be patient with us sometimes when we get our, our requisite number of, uh, uh, of people wanting to try and get their extra happy pills for fun and profit. But, you know, when it comes to chest pain, for instance, not everybody has the classic signs. You know, what, what, how do you know you're having a heart attack? Anybody? Anybody ever had a heart attack? Okay. Anybody ever had a heart attack probably and just refused to admit it? <laughs> um, what, what, kind, what kind of symptoms do you expect to have? How about the ladies? What kind of symptoms do you expect to have? Chest pains. Okay. Did you know that, uh, yeah. Tightness in the chest, and arm pain, pain up in the neck or the jaw, the young lady said. Uh, 
Sweaty, exactly. Well, did you know about? Yes, ma'am. And very weak. That's that's actually the type of thing I'm getting to, because first of all, over a quarter of all heart attacks, nobody had the traditional chest pain. They didn't even know they had a heart attack based on traditional symptoms of your chest hurting, feeling heavy, going to your left arm, making you feel like that. Okay, he's saying I knew I shouldn't have that that uh, artery clog and burger earlier. Um, so. But you know that's all right. I'll 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 work through this. I got some more paperwork to do, and you know when I finish my sixth cigarette, it'll be okay. Um. So, with women in particular, and people who are diabetic or may have had other uh, neuropathic issues where they have, they feel pain in a different way. A lot of times, it's just feeling suddenly weak, or you're getting really really short of breath. Or short of breath and sweaty and sweaty and weak and just it doesn't you know if it's again you're bundled up in 17 layers of clothes 122 degrees outside and you're sweating eh, probably normal if you're having to walk outside in 30 degrees and sweat stripping off of you mm, probably not and so you got you got to weigh these things but you know full well you don't want to go to the ER there's going to be 17 of them in there and the only thing worse than them are their parents but, you know, I might be having a stroke. I got the little devil in my mind, and it's chasing after my brain, and my brain's saying, help me, help me, help me. But what about signs and symptoms of a stroke, too? You know, that, any, what about things like that? Well, you know, stroke's an emergency. Do you know about how long we have to, to rescue brain tissue? About three hours. From the onset Okay. Now, that, that is somewhat of an exaggeration. We say that hard and fast that this is the way it is and it's never going to be any different. There is a little wiggle room. Okay. Sometimes you can add an extra hour to it based on certain conditions. And when we refer out to major stroke centers, for instance, um, if, if you have a big stroke and you're at your third, third or more hour by the time I get hold of you, uh, pretty much, unless it's a foregone conclusion and, and you ain't going to make it, your butt's going to have some air underneath you and you're going to Erlanger or maybe Skyline, the two major regional stroke centers, because they have inter investigational opportunities to go reverse that even as far as 24 hours out. Okay. Uh, actually, Dr. Devlin down at Erlanger runs one of the top two of the world's best stroke centers in, in the entire world and the best one in the United States. And they have um, re, uh, investigational opportunities and other techniques that they don't even have at Emory, Vanderbilt, uh, the National Medical Center in DC, things like that. So, you know, if, if you need a bypass, if, if you need something more than we can handle here for your heart, it's a pretty good bet that, you know, if we can't handle it here, Nashville's a good place to go. St. Thomas, Vanderbilt, Centennial, all do a wonderful job. But, you know, if I had my druthers, if I got a stroke, you're going to ship me down to Chattanooga. Alternatively, if you go to Nashville Skyline, because uh, HCA has concentrated most of its stroke efforts at, uh, at Skyline. They're kind of dividing up the hospitals to kind of centralize talents. But for strokes, you know, do you have fit changes in your face? Does one side of the face droop? You ask them to smile. Arms, is, is one arm weak or numb? Ask, can you move one up or down? Does it drift? Do you slur your speech or have trouble choosing the words you want to say? Okay, now, now listen. You have chest pain or you have stroke symptoms. What do you do? Option number one, call 911. Option number two, you call your sister in Dubuque. She calls your child in DC who then calls your cousin who lives next door to you and who calls your son who's three, feet, three blocks away to come get you to bring her to her house next door. Then you go to her house next door because she used to be a nurse. And she goes, huh, I think you might have a stroke. So we call all the family together. We load them up in the back of the minivan and we drive and we drive and we drive and seven hours later we show up, show up to the ER. No, no, no. I know we don't want to pay the, the, the ambulance bill, and I think that we, we, over, we overuse ambulance services a lot. But if it's an emergency, 
use the support that's there, okay? Not the least of which is if they call a code stroke, depending on the symptoms, we might could do a scene flight. We might could have everything ready to go for when you roll in the door, okay? Just like a heart attack, they do the EKG on you. We know that you're coming through the door with an ST segment elevation MI. And at that point, before you come in the door, we have called the cath lab, and we know whether we've got those resources available. We know that we need to have the thrombolytics, the clot busters available, if you're a candidate for those, for strokes and heart attacks. These are things that are really important, and they're life-saving, and they're tissue-saving. But I don't want to come because it's, it, school started. It's cold, and everybody's got an ear infection. They got strep throat. And they're upset because they've been in the ER for four hours and haven't been seen yet, which is why I had these things installed, by the way. You see that? You know what that is? Anybody know what that is? No, that's what I want you to think. When I came here full time a, a, a little over a year ago as one of the medical directors, I had them installed in the ER everywhere. They beam happy rays of sunshine on you while you're waiting. That's why you always feel better when the doctor finally gets to see you. This is an owie. We never want to see this. This is good. This is bad. This is your brain. This is where your brain used to be. This is a stroke. This is someone who waited too long. Anybody know what this is? Well, yeah, it's CONUS. It's the continental United States. Mostly, there's a couple. There, there's a Yankee state there. There's Indiana. Well, we can't. Don't claim them. Don't guess. And um, and we cut off Florida. There. You know what this is? This is the stroke belt. This is the highest concentration of strokes in the United States. All of its territories are located in these states. Well, a lot of it has to do with. Uh, Diet, a lot of it has to do with hypertension. Um, in fact, hypertension is so bad in Alabama, they call it the Alabama disease. And it, it generally leads to renal failure. There's more people on dialysis in Alabama and Mississippi than there are pretty much in most of the other southern states. Uh, diabetes that's out of control, things along those lines. But I love my country ham. But again, we got decisions to make when we come to the ER. You know, it's like being in front of the music box at the Waffle House trying to choose what you want to put in, what you want to play. So, you know, you, you, get to, you get to the point where I know I probably need to go see the doctor. And if it's the weekend, I know Dr. Dr. Tucker isn't open and uh, Dr. Uh, and Dr. Johnson's not open, and so, uh, you know, and I don't want to bother them because he said he was going to, you know, Dr. Johnson said he was going to go to this, this retreat with his sons, and, and, and I, you know, I don't want to bother him, and, it, you know, it's probably nothing anyway. Um, I know what I'll do. I'll call the ER doctor and ask him. Say, call, and we get out there, and we go, oh, oh. Um, and I said, hey, how are you? This is Dr. Word. Let me look into my crystal ball here, and uh, we'll see what's going on. But well, I don't know you from Adam, Eve, or whatever, but I got my crystal ball. Problem is, last week I ran over it in the parking lot. <laughs> Personally would like to see, and I keep kicking around whether I'll do it or not, um, starting a, uh, a patient advocacy service. In other words, you have a physician that goes and help when and nurses that go and help you when you are going to undergo certain things uh, let, let's say you you are diagnosed with cancer and you're trying to sort out what to do and where to go or in the case of one of my friends who needed a liver transplant um and they said it wouldn't be done it couldn't be done and when he did this uh let's see goodness it's been four years now so he's probably 69 now um he's 65 and had non-alcoholic cirrhosis they don't know why his liver just gummed up but it did didn't have anything to do with alcohol, drugs, and old farmer, doing great, neighbor and a friend of mine. Well, I, uh, he wouldn't go to the doctors. He went to the Vanderbilt four times in a month because he was having some atypical chest pain with him. Boy, they knew everything about his heart. Oh, yeah, he got cath four times. But he wouldn't let anybody 
sit down and do the proper workup. So finally, his wife got mad, and I, I said, well, go up to the hospital. I'll meet you up there. So I went up there. Within 30 minutes, I had a diagnosis. You know, it was, it, you just had to put things together and look at the proper lab work. And within 45 days, we had him transplanted. Okay. But that 45-day period of trying to find the right place and, go in the right, and, and who does this best and who does that best and who might have the best opportunity to have a, a donor liver, for instance. And he's doing great, by the way. He's even off all, almost all of his anti-rejection medicines. He's only taking Prograf right now. Um, you, you know, I, I helped him and his wife through the whole step, every step. And, and, I, and we tried to think outside the box. If you've got friends or relatives or, or folks that can help you with that, that's a very good thing because when you're, when you're ill or bereaved, when you have a lot of stress on you, or more importantly, you know, things like heart disease and, and strokes and cancers and that, that's not just for the patient, it's their whole family. You need some help. You need some uh, unbiased advice, too, for someone to just sit down and, and uh, coach the quarterback in the team. Your primary care doctor is your, your, your quarterback, but you still need a coach. So, um, you, you know, you go through this, and then you, then you got to think, well, you know, is it bad enough that I have to go to the Waffle House? And the point of the matter is, if you're thinking that you need to come to the ER, you probably should have come. If you are 18 years old, healthy, and you've filed your fifth application for disability, probably you don't need to be in my ER. Okay, if you got a sick grandbaby, a sick child, if you're having a twinge in your chest, something along those lines, you might ought to consider coming. If you thought about coming to the to the Waffle House, but I'm going to hit trauma. You know they bring trauma in. We do. We get car wrecks, and gunshots, and all that kind of stuff. I'm the medical examiner in my county too, and goodness, it's been a, a busy year so far. Um, but the uh, one thing that helps us a lot is if we know what your medicines are, the most up-to-date medicines. Um, if you have a list of your procedures and things you had done so we don't have to play, well, tell me about that secret mole you got behind your left knee that you've only had to tell 17,492 people in your life. Um, because a lot of these things, while some of it is in the computer, a classic example is something that happened yesterday. I'm talking to somebody, and I import the history from the computer. And we switched over computers, and we're going to drive you crazy because we switched over uh, software systems in the end of February, beginning of March. And so all that data was purged because the systems were not compatible. So we're reentering everybody. So when you come in, we have to put in a lot. Of, but we can, if you've been in the system since basically March 1st, we can import the data okay, from, uh, from other files. But sometimes it's wrong. Okay, so that's not, that's, I'm just part of the toolbox. I'm not the healer, only the good Lord is. I'm just part of the toolbox. But it's a lot easier to have the right socket that fits the, uh, fits the wrench and the nut you're trying to turn. So, okay, any questions about anything you want to talk about? Mark, Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room? At Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay him a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great.